Toyota Cyan Lexus from the 1990s all the way through current. If your seatbelt looks like this, this video shows the inspection and disassembly if you've got a jammed buckle. Check the pink comma for the Tom Stamps. The in-vehicle inspection on three different Toyota models is next. The disassembly starts at about the 3 minute 30 mark. The driver's side seatbelt buckle is always the first to go on any car, especially your Toyota that has this kind of style. You can see that's a pretty old seatbelt there. This is from a 2000 RAV4 with over 200,000 miles on it. And I'm going to show you in this video how to disassemble this seatbelt. But I want to tell you something in advance, um, a thing that I learned while doing this disassembly. The first thing you want to do is do a visual inspection. You see how that just popped out? Because in the process of doing this disassembly, I learned that there is a way to visually inspect it and to know in advance whether or not you've got some broken parts in there. And that is to look carefully right in here and to look in that spot there and that spot there. And you're not seeing the parts that ought to be there on this belt buckle because they are broken. So somewhere lodged inside there, these little parts are broken and that's what's causing it to do that. Where sometimes it won't come up, you try to put the belt buckle in, it does this business. You're going to see this seat belt disassembled in this video. I'm just going to go over here to this side on this same 2000 RAV4 and show you the difference there. See those little tabs? Those red little tabs, I'll turn it so you can see one of them there. There's one, and then the other, same spot on the other side, right there. If I can get this camera to focus, right there. Those two tabs are not broken on this seat belt, and although it's not very pretty, it works great. So your first thing I think is to do the visual inspection look for those little red tabs on each side you might have one broken you might have two broken as you see on here if you do not see those tabs then the little piece of red plastic is lodged in the seat belt and that is what's causing it to do this this seat belt here is a 2006 Corolla matrix and you can see it also has those little tabs there So this is all very similar design, probably just the exterior for some trim considerations is the only thing that's probably really different. So this, um, this will be similar on many, many years of Toyota seatbelt buckles. This is a seatbelt here on a 2013 Toyota Sienna, and you can see it also has those same little red tabs. So I would first inspect your Toyota seat belt to look for those little red tabs before determining whether it's worth even trying to lubricate it or repair it. If those red tabs are missing or broken, then that means it's time to replace the receptacle. Here are the two original seat belt buckle receptacles from this 98 RAV4. And this one I scribed bad in the plastic there. So this is gonna be the one I'm gonna take apart. This was originally the driver's side. It got bad, and so I swapped the passenger side over. And so this one is gonna go back over to the passenger side. It still has some still has some life in it, especially since the owner of this RAV4 only very occasionally has passengers. But this one, even after cleaning and lubrication, half the time it gets stuck like that. So I'm gonna I'm gonna take this apart. See if that's possible. See if there's any way to do a repair on these. Here is our old bad seatbelt. And while fooling around with this, this piece came out. This piece, I can't tell whether it's broken or if it just came out from a spot where it's supposed to be. I'm looking in here and I can see where there's plastic here and behind it, there's actually a little metal plate. So I'm gonna first try putting this in the vise and kind of knocking it. These are not places for fasteners. Those looks like some kind of pins. So 
I've never taken apart a Toyota seatbelt. I've taken apart a Mercedes seatbelt. And in that case, this kind of slid back, but you had to get it just right. So let's put this in the vise and see what we can do. What I'm thinking I need to do is clear that little shiny piece of metal there. I'm thinking I need to push the plastic part back so that I could hammer the plastic part down and then that metal part will clear. I'm gonna try a big screwdriver. The little pick doesn't really seem to be working. So I'm thinking maybe I get back here. Looks like the camera's just going to be in my way a little bit. Kind of move it over. Alright, looks like I'm just behind it there. Okay. Alright. Now... I'm going to tap, tap this. There we go. Sweet. All right, so that is how it comes apart. Let me um, pop this out. There we go. Looks like this will that come out pop right off well there we go all right we're inside now well, let's go back to the bench here are those parts and when I took this out another one of these little deals fell out so um, that makes me think that something must might be broken we'll find out where these go after we disassemble because it's not obvious by looking at this that there's any broken parts um, looks symmetrical but it's not apparent that there's any broken parts if you hear the noise in the background i do not have a baby sheep in the garage with me it's uh super windy and it's <laughs> it's not a baby sheep that's the wind blowing uh blowing on a door that's not particularly well sealed for this much wind anyway this is actually working pretty well and you can see how this works. This part here, this part here is a piece of steel that moves back and forth when this spring part moves back. And then on this side, if I were to simulate the buckle pressing down here, I can simulate the buckle pressing down and you can see how that just fell through. So this is the part that would go through and lock onto the buckle. So let me see if I could simulate that one more time. We'll also put this in the car um, so we have an idea. Uh, well, if I had it just right, there, it would go all the way through right there on that little square. So this is the part, that's gonna be the part that moves to lock across. The problem wasn't the locking of the seatbelt, the problem was getting it to engage. So if two broken pieces of something were jammed in here somewhere, that's obviously going to mess up, let's say it's here, it's not going to be able to go down far enough, so the belt buckle isn't going to be able to engage. With those two pieces of broken plastic, or apparently broken plastic, removed, this is actually functioning pretty well. So let's go test it in a vehicle and then we'll uh, take this apart. Now we're in a 2000 RAV4, same, same belt buckle as the 98 that we took this out of, same part number and all. That's what that belt buckle looks like. You can see it's a square hole. And so when this goes in, you're pushing down until you get alignment where this part here can is pressed by this part here to move across and lock into the square hole. Like, let me see if I get it. There we go, like so. If I flip it over on this side, that's the part that moved right there. It's inside that square hole, so we can't pull this out. Now when I press down, 
it releases it. So you can see there's a spring there. There's a spring in this area here. That's probably where stuff can get caught and um, cause it to start binding. You can see if this got dirty, this would bind up pretty quick. And there's lots of spots where it could get dirty. So let's see if I can show you this way. There it is, snap. Okay, and I'm holding this with my finger because this will pull out like that since I have the case off. And we'll go again on this side here. Push it down, snap. You can see that part right there is the part that moves. This pushes that, this pushes that piece of metal off of that little thing, which allows that to move back, and then this belt buckle will come out. Snap. So this is actually working really well. The, um, the problem that this belt was having in the vehicle is you would go to go to connect it and it just wouldn't wouldn't go. But like I mentioned, when I first took this belt out, I could tell there was a, pe a loose piece of something in there. I didn't know what it was because when I shook it, you could hear something moving. As you can see here, I'm just keeping my finger on this since that moves. But if you shake this, you can't hear anything. So if you take your belt off or your buckle off and you shake it and you can hear something, then there's either a broken part inside like that red part that I'm still not sure where that goes, or maybe a piece of something, a piece of food, a little piece of a toy, something might have ended up in there, a coin. This is probably a very popular place for little ones to stick coins. A coin got wedged in there or something. Um, so I will take this apart a little bit more, and then we will eventually try to put it back together. But this, again, this is not going to be reused. Real quick though, before we go back to the bench, this is a properly functioning it's very old. You can see they all turn pink, these Toyotas. But this is the way this is supposed to work. All right. Now this one, even though it's, it is latching, it's still got like a, that little click right there. There's, it's still catching on something. And it just feels different doing this versus this one here. So let's take this thing apart. I'm going to try to keep it close, keep it on the table so that the focus doesn't constantly change on this camera. Make sure I got it as focused as I can here. Okay. Uh, I can see here there's a little tab for this kind of, this is like a spring sort of design here. And so I'm going to push this tab down and then pry this out here and that should loosen that. Okay that goes. Now I can pull that out and if I pull that out I can put that to the side there. Now I should be able to lift this out. Let's see, there's that. Okay, that just lifts out and then this was in that orientation just like that with those features facing up and this ramp thing where that was sliding. You saw how that was working, it was sliding like that. Okay, so there's our parts. And now I'm gonna look over this real carefully, but it's not apparent exactly where these broken pieces would fit. You can see it's, it's really not that dirty in here. This was probably pretty dirty before I switched these seat belts. Um, before replacing it. I went in here and I shot this out with compressed air and then I shot it out with um, hot water. Then I let it dry completely and I shot it with, um, with some lubricant uh, just to see if I could get a little bit more life out of it. Uh, as I mentioned before, while waiting for those other parts to come in. And so it's, it's clean. It wasn't this clean though, because I remember when I was shooting the water in here, dirt was dirty water was just coming out this side. So, as for these two pieces, I believe I found out where they go. On this here, there is two little spots here and here, and I noticed that um, these little line, these little deals line up. Okay, like that one there, look at that. That lines up perfectly. 
So it looks like that was supposed to go there, and then this one also lines up perfectly on those little cracks. So it looks like that was supposed to be shaped like that. Just for the sake of reinstall, I'm just going to super glue them. Um, again, if you if you use super glue, it'll just fall apart again. Um, it, ideally, you would want to get that piece if you were doing some type of repair. But if you have a good plastic welder, you might be able to make a repair there with a plastic weld. I'm just going to use super glue, just because, like I said, this is this at this point is just for demonstration. But let's see what it's supposed to at least see what it's supposed to look like. So I changed my mind, and I am going to do a little, just a little impromptu plastic weld on here since. The, the um, super glue. There's just no way that's gonna work. Not even for demonstration. It's just gonna break. It makes it too brittle. So this isn't pretty, but at least maybe it'll be enough for our demonstration. Okay. I think that's about how it's supposed to be. Something like that. This should probably be lined up a little bit better. Like that one's probably better. But I believe this is what this thing is supposed to look like, based on the little fracture marks on those pieces. Let's see if we can reassemble this now. With this, even though this is a crazy little jerry rig here, at least this gives an idea of what this is supposed to look like. Because now I can see that these little parts here are supposed to go there. So I'll put the arrow on it there and over there. And so this is supposed to be quite different. Like this, those ride, it looks like, on those guides there. And then that goes in. I expect that this is gonna break as soon as I put this under compression, but let's give it a shot anyway. We'll push that back in there to where I think it ought to be. And this part's gonna go back in here, okay? Okay, it didn't break yet let's see how those are there and there now if i can get this to focus so it looks like that's how those pieces were supposed to go i wouldn't weld that one very well because it's not lined up great but um so maybe that's what was that's part of the deal that causes that to bounce up would that would explain it was also explain if those break that that's going to gum that up real quickly so then we this is going to be our last piece we got to put this piece back in this piece goes in with those step features facing up and that just went right there but we have to get it into the ah see it just broke that just broke that one do I want to try to redo that? Let me go ahead and try to redo that just for demonstration purposes. I'll pull this out, try to weld that again. All right, tried it again. We'll see if that's going to last for one install, please. One install. Okay, let's try this again. So this was like that. I guess maybe I should put it on the bottom side first, pull this back. Or maybe if I can leave this back for a little bit longer. Um, no, because uh, I guess I'll get it in on the top first. Okay, so that's how that's supposed to be. Those little deals are supposed to be there. And uh, I got to get the this piece in. So that one went like that. Drops in here, but it's got to go down a bit further. Let me just see if I can put this thing, I think something just broke, put this thing together like so. This one was the one that slides back in here. There we go. Okay, cool. All right. So... It looks like, well, maybe it didn't break. Okay, it looks like this is assembled the way it ought to be, except for those crazy plastic welds. So that, okay, that one's not working properly because you see how it didn't rebound. All right, yeah, that's jamming it. So that's actually getting stuck in there in some way right there. 
So this is what it was actually doing in the vehicle. So those little dealies were, in fact, jamming it up. Well, at least we know what it ought to look like um, now. So what I'll do then, let me take these out actually. I'm gonna go ahead, since those, those appear to be part of what's the assist up, I'm gonna actually just break them off real quick. Get them out of there. And we'll put this seatbelt back together without them. It's back together in its broken form. But I will go ahead and slip this back on again for demonstration purposes. You can see that plastic got pretty torn up down there. So I don't know that these are, I don't think these are particularly disassemblable. I think they're intended to be replaced. But obviously sometimes you're in a situation and you just need to take stuff apart. Instead of replace it, you need to fix it. So I'm going to use the screwdriver again to get a little gap between the plastic and the metal and I'm just gonna pull up on that. All right, I just heard it snap. Oh, and look, we're flush. So we're back flush. So it looks like we're good. All right. Okay. Now I'm curious, so let's go back to, let's go back to a car and see if it works at all. So we're back here in the test route four. And I just noticed something that I'll show you in a minute that's actually pretty cool. Um, I'm going to see if this works here at all. It does, but you can see it's not retracting all the way. This should be flush when this is plugged in. So those little, those little um, wing dingy, wing things that were broken on this, they have something to do with that function. It is clicking now, and before it wouldn't click at all. It would get stuck because presumably those pieces were just jamming it up and they weren't allowing everything to move properly. But check this out. This is actually a cool thing that I can now use for inspections because now that I've taken this apart and I know about those little wing things that broke, I can show you right there where they should be. You should be able to see them just by looking. And we know they're broken on this one because this is the one we just took apart. This is the one that we've been testing on. It doesn't look too good, but it works great. And look there. You can see those little features. There they are. Both of them are there. So they are not broken on this belt, which is why this belt works so well. It doesn't look too pretty, but it works really well. Well, watch. This is the passenger side, come right over here to the driver's side on this Route 4. And as you can see, this one is not working well. It's not coming up, it's stuck. And now that I know what to look for, I can see both of those little red things are broken. So if you look in your Route 4 seatbelt and you do not see red tabs in those little spots, then that means that the seat belt is indeed broken, just like you saw in this video, and it is time to replace it. So we'll do one last side-by-side -side here, and I hope this video was helpful for you on inspecting and determining whether or not you're going to make a repair or go ahead and just replace your seat belt buckles. Thank you for watching, and good luck with your repair.